Get ready. We're diving into router tips, unique projects, my favorite finishing oil, and the moment you've all been waiting for, cracking open a cold one. But be warned, this video might manage to piss off my wife. I'm Donnie with Designs by Donnie, and I make acrylic templates to help makers create fun projects because when I started, none of these resources were available to me. Are you ready to take flight with a cold brew delight? Me too. I've been wanting to make a flight board for a long time, so I chose black walnut and came up with this fun design. You see, this handle is gonna be in the shape of brass knuckles. How unique, right? My first tip is gonna be talking about handheld routers, as we're gonna be using that in this video to produce this product. Now, when you're using a handheld router, I've got my faceplate on it, uh, and by the way, that just helps out with stability and balance, and it's just easier for dish platters and just routing. Um, but when you're using a handheld router, it's going to be different from the router table. You see the bit is going to spin clockwise when we're in this right side up motion. So the direction you're going to want to go in is completely different and opposite of a router table. You're going to want to go left to right now as it's going to complement the bit rotation. And we're just going to get a smoother cut, a smoother work piece, less chip out. Stabilizing the work piece with gear clamps is amazing. They work like vice grips and using the jigsaw to cut the board in half. So I have two pieces. One goes to the scrap pile, the other goes to the bandsaw so I can remove the excess. You see, we're gonna wanna leave about an eighth of an inch so that way it's safe for the router work. Then we're gonna use a sacrificial board to go under the work piece while we drill these holes. We'll get a cleaner cut. And then moving on to the router table, we're gonna position the wheel so it rides along the template cleanly. Doing any type of router work, the name of the game is preventing chip out and blow out, all that nasty shit. So one of my great tips that I've always done with my router work is I like to wet the edges. You've seen that and you've heard me talk about it, but let me show you an example. Let's use this sunblock as an example, like water on wood. Superficially, it doesn't do anything, right? But if we rub it in and we let it go into the pores of my skin, the pores of the wood, it's going to take about a minute depending on the wood species but the time is critical. So 45 seconds to a minute, and then you're ready to do some router work. Let's moisten those edges and get busy. Remember, we're gonna push from right to left, and we're gonna start this router work, but make sure you start on the side grain, not the end grain. Always note that when you're on the router table, everything's kind of the reverse or the opposite of the handheld router. So now the bit rotation is gonna spin counterclockwise. And since it spins counterclockwise, we're gonna push our material from right to left. It's gonna complement the bit rotation. And again, you'll get a smoother cut, less chip out, less blow out, any of that annoying shit, and especially no kickback. Let's take a quick pause. As I wanna call my wife, I've been thinking about it, and I don't know if she picked up the flight glasses I wanted. Hey honey, can you bring me the, um, your flight glasses? What? She sounded a bit irritated. Here. Yeah, I did something wrong. Don't worry, I'll make her something. She's a sucker for home decor. If you're a maker of any kind, you're gonna want some double-sided tape in your workshop. It's just a great tool to have in your toolbox. It comes in handy. You'll see here in the next clip how I'm about to use it. But this double-sided tape, unfortunately, they're not all created equally, and this is the best I have found. It's called X-Fasten. I'm not sure if you can see that, I'll have a link in the description box if you're interested, but it's got an amazing amount of strength to it. The tensile strength, the side to side, the downward pressure, the work pieces literally do not move and the templates do not move. That's most important. After all, if you're flush trimming something, you don't want that damn template to slide off because of some janky double-sided tape. This one is legit. Look into it. And another cool feature with the tape is you can use it to stick your material down to your table, holding it in place as if you clamped it except better, no clamps are in the way, and it won't budge. Now using my faceplate extension tool, we're gonna route out the glass portion for these fight glasses, and this half inch bit with the bearing down below is gonna help us do this. But don't forget about that tip we talked about earlier. When using a handheld router, we're gonna go left to right, almost like a circular motion, and this will remove the material great. And then we need to do a little cleanup, and using the yard blower to be dramatic, oh shit. I almost blew my router off the table, and don't worry, I didn't, but I did freak out. Now let's sand in some of those tight areas and move on to my favorite finish. I love this stuff. It provides the best luster, the best finish, and it's just great because it's food safe, and I use this on all charcuterie boards and cutting boards. 
But it's time to set up this flight board and pour a cold one. After looking up flight boards and doing some research, I found that there are typically six glasses to every flight board. So that's why I did this. Let's open up a cold refreshment and get pouring. This came out awesome. I'm really proud of it. But if it's not your thing, simply flip it over and start chopping up your veggies, tomatoes, broccoli, whatever it is. Have you made a flight board before?